Hello everyone and welcome back to my channel Tomcat Stitchery. I'm Whitney and today we've got Sunday Sew Along and we've got another zipper tutorial. Now I know I promised to do exposed zippers this week but um, while well, you can do an exposed zipper technique to any zipper, I got to thinking the whole kind of point of doing an exposed zipper is showcasing some of the really pretty zippers that are out there. Um, and there's two different ways you can do it. You can do like um, with the zipper tape still behind the fabric, but you've got kind of a cutout where you can see the teeth because, you know, there's like Sw Swavarsky crit... Sw <laughs> Swavarsky... Sw that's not... I'm not saying that right crystals like you can find those on teeth um, sometimes there's just different colors that are going on that can be really cool um, another thing with zippers is sometimes you do want to see the tape because there's like the lacy eyelet tape you can get sometimes it's a pattern you know like um, I've seen like the Burberry type plaid on it before like camouflage or like a cool stripe um, or again like that eyelet so I thought you know if we're gonna be doing these exposed zipper tutorials I kind of want to use the correct a zipper that you'd actually want to show off, not just a standard zipper. So I have ordered some, <laughs> and those should be in next week. Um, so I'm going to break those tutorials up into two separate parts. One is going to be doing an exposed zipper where you just are wanting the teeth kind of exposed, and then the other um, zipper tutorial, because they are done a little differently, if you want the actual tape to be on the outside um, to have that exposed. So I'm going to wait and push those next week and the week after. So for this week, we have done a zip fly. Okay, this is the Glissando skirt by Love Notions Patterns, which actually has a um, button fly, but I turned it into a zipper fly. And um, made it for my daughter because my waist is not wanting to have any kind of actual waistband on it right now. So, <laughs> I use scraps from, um, oh, I think this is a Mind the Maker um, denim. I have a pair of Persephone pants out of this. And um, it's called like algae or something like that, the fabric is. Anyway, these are scraps. It was just enough to make her a little jean skirt. And um, yeah, so I've done the zip fly into the skirt. Um, obviously with jean type details, you know, the extra top stitching and the, the bar tacks and all that kind of stuff. But I do talk you through as I'm going along how if you're just wanting to do it for like a pair of trousers or a nicer skirt. Um, and I also talk about you know, it's pretty much the same thing as if you were putting it into a pair of jeans or a pair of trousers, and I talk about the differences as, which are very minimal, as um, I go along. So hopefully that is helpful and helps you to um, figure that out as well. Okay, so this is the skirt. We'll be putting in a zipper fly. Um, as always, let me know if you have questions down below. And if you liked this video and found it very helpful, I do have a coffee account, which is like a virtual tip jar um, with the link down below. Any money that I get from that does go right back into the channel for supplies, equipment, um, all that kind of thing for these tutorials and sew alongs. All right, guys, that's all I have. Again, questions down below. I'll answer those as soon as possible, and I will see you guys on Tuesday. Bye. Okay, we are putting in a fly zip into a skirt. Um, I've got a tutorial, I think I've already mentioned it um, probably in the uh, first part of the video, but I do have a tutorial on how to do it in jeans. It's very similar. The only difference, you're working with two completed fronts of the skirt. The only difference with the pants is that you've got a crotch curve and then it comes down. It's, it's really very much the same thing. So um, <clears throat> I wanna talk about zippers just a little bit. I have just a regular nylon zipper here, which is actually what I'm gonna be using only because even though this is denim, it's a very thin denim, and I'm going to treat it more as like a um, cotton twill and a little less as like a heavier duty denim. Um, but if you do have like a denim um, that you're making a pair of jeans out of or something, you can use obviously a jean zipper. So it, it goes in the same way. Um, so I would just kind of um, use the zipper. I mean, I could use the zipper on the skirt. It's just sometimes when you use a heavy metal zipper, it weights the fabric down a little bit and you can get some pull and drag lines that you might not have um, otherwise. So just keep that in mind. But um, yeah, you could definitely use a jean zipper, which is just usually metal teeth. It's a little bit um, larger size. Um, I'm not sure what size this one is, to be honest. I don't know that it says on here. This is a size three nylon zipper. This might be like a size five, maybe. I feel like that's what I use normally, like a size five. So yeah, you can use either. We're gonna be using a nylon zipper. So prepping. This is the Glissando skirt from Love Notions Patterns. 
um, that actually has a button fly, but I have adapted it to a, a zip fly. But pretty much any skirt with a zipper fly or pants or jeans, um, they will either have the grown on fly, which is what I have actually altered it to do, <laughs> or it will be a sew on fly. So, um, you know, it, it really doesn't make that, I mean, they put it, the zipper goes in the same way, no matter what. It's just that if you have a sew on fly, you have to sew this like curved piece onto the center front first. Um, it's just, you have extra seam allowances here and I just find that a little bulky. So, um, anyway, I just prefer to eliminate it. I have gone ahead and you can kind of see here, I've chalked in, this is my seam allowance, um, center front, and I've gone all the way down into the seam allowance here of the skirt. Um, it just helps when you're sewing, you know, basting your pieces together. It makes that really easy to see. Uh, and then I have down here a little crosshatch marked. This is where the, um, end of my zipper is supposed to go. So eventually, you know, my zipper stop will, which is this part right here, will stop right here at this crosshatch. And my zipper is longer than what I need so that I can cut off the top. You guys know that's the way I like to do things. Um, so yeah, uh, the other piece that you're going to need is some sort of fly, oopsie, sorry, fly extension, which is this piece. Um, it usually has kind of a curved bottom here. Um, this is the pattern piece. It's what it looks like. They can look a little different. Um, and we'll be treating, we'll be um, working with this here in just a second. But before we do anything, uh, what we are going to, to do, and again, this is the same as if you were using um, pants, you would just go to a crotch curve, whereas and not go all the way down the front. Whereas our crotch curve, you can think of it as just the whole front of the skirt. So, okay. What we're going to do first is we're going to start here at the top and we're going to baste our two pieces together from the top. And we're going to back stitch at this cross hatch. Uh, this should be marked on whatever pattern you're using. It's the bottom part of the zipper. I'll back stitch and then I'll switch to a um, 2.5 inch, um, 2.5 inch, a 2.5 millimeter stitch and um, back stitch again here at this point and sew all the way down to the bottom of the skirt. Or if you had a crotch curve, you would sew from that point to the end of the crotch curve. So using your seam allowance, there's a half inch seam allowance on this pattern, but it's the same. Um, also my pocket pieces go into my fly. That's just the way this pattern's drafted. Not all do that. Sometimes they'll stop like here or whatever. Um, so just be aware of that, that your pocket piece might look different. It doesn't really play. I mean, everything still gets put in the same way. Okay. So I'm going to quickly go over and, um, do that. And then I'm also, while I'm over there, going to take my fly extension piece and I'm going to press it wrong sides together and I'm just going to surge um, or finish off however you want. Um, I take that back. Hold on. I'm going to take this piece. I'm skipping steps on you. Right sides together. I'm going to sew this bottom together at a quarter of an inch. Flip it right side together once that's been sewn. And then finish this um, raw edge off with a serger. I mean, obviously you could use a zigzag stitch. Um, the overlock stitch on a sewing machine, whatever, binding, however you want to finish that off. So I'm going to go do those things and then I'll meet you right back here. Okay. I also can't remember if I told you to finish off this edge here um, first on both sides. You don't need to finish off your crotch curve yet or the rest of the front of the skirt. Just kind of go to where this kind of dips in as best as you can and then just kind of, you know, finish it off. I've got some dangly threads there and that's okay. Um, I think I forgot to mention that. Okay, so we have basted from center front down here to the notch. Um, it's kind of fading a little bit. Back stitched, and then I've gone back to my regular stitch length all the way down the rest of the front of the skirt or to the end of the crotch curve, depending on which you're doing a pants or skirt. Um, the other piece that I have uh, done here is my fly extension. I have um, sewn the bottom together, right sides together, turned it wrong sides together, gave it a good press, and now I've finished off this raw edge with serging. And here at the bottom, I've left a nice long tail and I take a darning needle that has like a pretty blunt tip, but um, a nice big eye, wrap that, put that through the eye. This is how I finish off all my thread tails that I don't necessarily wanna cut off real short. And then I'm just gonna feed it back through that serged line. And then I can cut off that excess, like so. 
Okay. So those um, should be all of your parts and pieces. So in the next step we're going to do, we're gonna set this aside for now. We don't need this right now. We are just gonna come here and we wanna press open. Um, I mean, eventually this part is not gonna be pressed open, you know, kind of below this hole, but we definitely want this part pressed. Actually, let's just go ahead and clip it. <laughs> All right, so what we're wanting to do is, um, and this will be the same for your crotch curve or the front of the skirt. Now you could leave it and just top stitch either side of your um, seam allowance open if you wanted to. If that's the case, you probably wanna go ahead and have already finished off the rest of the center front seam of the skirt. I'm gonna do mine like you would do a pair of jeans. So I'm gonna cut from the bottom of this kind of where it kind of goes back in. I'm just gonna cut diagonally up to that point, um, that notch through both those layers. I'm gonna cut two, but not through that stitching line. And this is so that, um, this is so that this um, seam can, uh, it'll get finished off together and it'll get pressed to one side, but we want this fly piece up here to be pressed open. Another trick that I like to use there, just to make sure things get um, aren't too weak, is I like to put a lot of fray check <laughs> on both sides there, just to kind of help keep that nice and together. Keep things from fraying more than they should. And then we can just kind of press that open. And then on jeans, so if this were the crotch curve coming out here, I would press it to the left. Obviously we're on the wrong side of the fabric here. Now I haven't finished this seam allowance off yet and I actually will go ahead and do that um, before I meet you back at the next step. But um, yeah, so we should have this pressed open and then your seam below that, whether that be the front of a skirt or the um, crotch seam of a pair of pants or jeans. And if you're making nice trousers, you know, if these aren't jeans that you're making, you could very well have just finished off this both seam allowances and just press that open. That's absolutely fine. This just is kind of a trait of denim, so that's what we're going with here. Okay, I will, I'm now gonna finish off this seam allowance right here just to get that all done and out of the way. And I, when I finish it off here at the top, I'm gonna tuck it back just like I did with the um, fly shield. I'll tuck that stitching, that uh, surging back down into that seam allowance too. Okay, gonna meet you at the sewing machine next with the skirt front and the zipper and we'll get this installed. Okay, now this next step is um, optional, depending on what you are, um, what style of garment you're making. So if you're making more of a pair of trousers, not a pair of jeans, you can skip this step. So if you're not gonna have a lot of top stitching, if you're only gonna be top stitching like your fly, you can skip this step. But because I'm making a um, jean skirt, I do want um, all of these jean details. So what I'm going to do, hold on, I need to. <laughs> adjust my tripod two sacks okay the joys of trying to sew around a tripod okay <laughs> so um I have two machines going today because I am doing a different top stitching thread than I am doing um for my regular sewing so um yeah so this is my home machine here so um for jeans I like to have a nice top stitching stitch length of 3.5 um, and then I do 2.5 for the rest of the sewing. So I'm just going to top stitch right um, to the right of this seam. And then down below, like I'm going all the way down. Now, if this were a pair of jeans, I would just continue this all the way down um, to the end of that crotch curve. Um, so you'll be sewing and your um, seam allowance should be pressed to that side on the back side if you pressed it to the left. All right, so we're just gonna stitch all the way down.
So everything is pressed open above the zipper line. This is also really hard to do because I'm really far away from this machine <laughs> because of the tripod. I might be doing a horrible top stitching job. It's not perfect, but it's not bad. All right, so once we have, I mean, I got a little wonky there. Okay, once we have all that top stitch, we're now gonna go and sew this zipper in. Okay, I have my um, zipper foot on here, just a regular old zipper foot. And we've got <clears throat> skirt, wrong side up. And then here we have our zipper. So the first thing we are going to do is we are going to sew, my um, zipper is face down. See, there's the right side. So it's face down and I'm lining the left side of the zipper tape up with the seam line. And I want my zipper stop here to be right um, a little above that, um, notch where we've clipped. So it's about, I don't know, we have to be able to sew down here. So um, to top stitch and we don't want to hit that. So I don't know, it's about half of an inch probably above that notch. Okay, so now we're going to take just the fly edge and the zipper. We're going to move the rest of the skirt and or jeans or pants or whatever you're doing out of the way. So we're just sewing through that fly piece and the zipper. And I'm going to do this. You also notice I'm not using any pens because um, pens just really, really can distort things. So I just, when I'm doing zippers, I prefer not to use them. All right, so zipper tape is lined up to, on the left-hand side here to that seam line. My stop is about a half of an inch above that notch, and we are just going to sew that in place. Now, I am just running my um, foot right along. I can kind of feel the teeth through there. In essence, you're basting this in place, really. Okay, so we've done that pass, okay? Now, we are going to flip this. Now, um, if you're doing jeans and, um, you know, if you really want to, you can switch and do your top stitching thread for this pass. I don't because it's, you can't see it. Um, and it's just quicker to do it this way. <laughs> so now I'm going to top stitch. So let's look at what I did there. We just sewed that on. I'm now flipping my zipper right side up and it's folding that piece of the, um, fly over. And now I'm just going to top stitch that in place. Again, you can switch to top stitching thread if you so desire, but it does not get seen. So that is completely up to you. Okay, now that's been stitched. Next, we're gonna open out the skirt. So now we have this um, half of the, of the zipper that's been like sewn here. So now it literally will fall like right in place for you. If I had a heavier zipper on here, it would really just fall right in place. Cause we've pressed that seam allowance nice and open. It just kind of flops to the left-hand side and that's what you want it to do. And once it's done that, you're gonna notice this is very similar to last week. Once we've got it, Right there, folded right where we want it. I'm now gonna pick up the zipper and the fly underneath. I forget that there's that extra bulk of that pocket there, which is kind of nice. Taking that pocket into the fly actually is great for, um, it kind of keeps your belly all in place. <laughs> okay. So now I'm going to run, um, I'm sewing the zipper tape to the other side of the fly. So my zipper is um, right side down right now. 
And again, I am running my zipper foot right along those teeth. It kind of does that for you, like so. Okay, so now we're gonna go over here to the front. And as you can see, I mean, our zipper is in. And once we have unpicked these basting stitches, this is gonna just work great. So now um, you can definitely mark, go ahead and mark this if you want um, so that you're stitching that fly piece perfectly. So even if you're doing just like a regular pair of pants or like a nicer pair of trousers or um, a nicer work skirt that's, that you want to fly on or something, um, you will do this top stitching, but this may be the only top stitching you do. I'm feeling for the end of the zipper there. It's always good just to go over here and check. Sometimes there it is, it's right there. You definitely want to make note of where that zipper stop is because you do not want to hit that with your needle. That is just sends shards of everything. All right, so now what we are going to do is um, you can either use the same thread if you want it to blend in to top stitch or I'm gonna obviously go back to my machine and do um, my top stitching thread but we're gonna be sewing down, basically following, you can kind of feel following that piece under there um, of the fly, but I wanna go underneath that stop and not hit it, and then connect back up here. So this is that top stitching, and I'm sewing through everything now. So I'm sewing through um, the zipper tape, the fly pieces, everything. We're just gonna to top stitch that down and go right, curve right around here. Again, if you wanna mark that in with chalk, you absolutely can. Um, but let's go and I'm going to go to the other machine because it's got the other thread in it for me and get that top stitched. All right, so we're back over here at this other sewing machine. I have gone ahead and marked in my top stitching line. So we just want to make sure that everything is over to the, um, well, the right-hand side, but that would be the left-hand side when worn. This is very hard to do when you're so far away from the machine. Okay. So now we are just going to top stitch. And I'm just going to be following that line that I've drawn. And I'm keeping that pen right there. I don't accidentally hit. All right, a lot of things will tell you not to backstitch here, but I do. I really don't think it looks that bad, so I always embrace that. <laughs> All right. So now you should have um, that all nice and put in. We're just going to check the back here. Let me clip some extra threads. And yeah, you can see I've, you know, sewn that down nicely. Okay, the last thing we're going to do is attach our um, fly shield to the back, which is just going to keep, um, be in between your body and the zipper so you don't zip anything up. And um, yeah, and then we're going to do a couple of tacking stitches to get the fly shield attached here at the bottom. And then we're going to do another line of top stitching. Uh, down here just to keep everything all my nice and lined flat. So we're uh, nice and lying flat. Again, that's an optional one. It depends on, you know, what you're going for with the top stitching on your project. So let's just go back to um, the other sewing machine um, and grab your fly shield and we'll get that put in. All right, so we've got our skirt, which is looking pretty good, or pants um, at this point, but now we're going to attach the fly shield. So this, flip everything over is going to get attached to the right-hand side when worn. And basically its job is to, that's upside down. <laughs> you want the seam that you sewed to be at the bottom. And um, basically its job is just to be in between your body and the zipper so you don't zip up your underwear and all that kind of stuff when you're um, using it. I also have a ton of extra threads up here. Sorry, that really bothers me. Let me just trim those up. <laughs> All right, so what you're gonna do is take your fly shield, and again, obviously this is the right-hand side of the skirt when worn, and also the right-hand side because we're looking at the back, 
And I'm just gonna line this raw edge up. It's not raw anymore because we finished it off, but I'm gonna line that up with the um, right-hand side of the fly and we'll be sewing this to the fly only. And this matches up, you know, pretty flush at the top. And then when it comes down here to the bottom, it's covering up that tape pretty well. But we only want to sew through the fly shield and the um, ex the extension. And I want those, I'm just going to line those up like raw edges together. Well, they're not really raw, but they're, they've been finished, but you know what I mean. And actually, I'm going to flip it over just to make sure. Just a little easier to get in there. Okay. You could technically go back to your normal foot at this point if you wanted to. I just, I mean, I just still have my zipper foot on and it's not going to hurt anything to have that on. All right, so now we're just going to sew those together. Like so. Oh, and my, uh, hold on, my needle came in through it. Okay, we're going to try this one more time. <laughs> with a uh, threaded machine. It's funny how that really does help. Okay, so I'm only sewing through that little bit of fly and my fly extension. Oh, there we go. I just always run this right along the edge of the um, serging there. It, I mean, there's not really a seam allowance. You're just wanting to tack those together. Okay, so when that is all said and done, so we stitched that, so then when you open everything back up, you've got this nice little fly extension there that um, has been sewn. So now we want to tack this in place so it's not just like flopping around um, on the inside of your pants, which could be super annoying, or skirt. So now um, with everything flipped over, um, you know, it's, it's under there, and I'm just going to go back and just kind of tack right here at the curve and then also right here at the base of the zipper just tacking that in place so that way we can still get the pants on and off easily but it keeps that fly shield um nice and in place so we're going to go over we're going to tack it here we're going to tack it here and then i'm going to do some um a second line of top stitching just because i want to you can omit that if you're not you know doing all the top stitching um but yeah we're gonna go do that okay other machine again Okay, I'd also like to point out this zipper's been closed this whole time. Obviously, we've got this top part that will get trimmed off after the waistband like we've done with the other ones, um, but it does make things much easier. All right, so you just want to make sure that everything is lying flat under here, and it is. There's my fly shield, and I'm, you know, you could do a bar tack if you want. Um, I actually prefer just to do a tight little zigzag, and I'm going to do a uh, 1.5 width and a, I think a, um, I've got thick thread. I think I'm gonna do a 1.5 length. So 1.5, 1.5, and I'm just going right here on this curve. Oopsie. So this is basically a bar tack. I'm just going to go forward and backward a little bit. Oh, good. <laughs> so you're doing a little bar tack there. If I'm doing a nicer trouser, I just kind of um, will do just a couple of stitches back and forth, kind of like a back stitch. Um, you know, so that it is, it secures it without looking too bulky. But since this is jeans again, um, that's what we're doing. Okay. I'm going to put in a second line of top stitching here just because that is pretty typical for jeans. Um, ooh, I need to go back to my straight stitch. <laughs> 3.5. Okay. All right. Um, so I'm going to start at the bottom. So if this were a pair of jeans um, or pants that I was doing top stitching, I would be starting this at the edge of the crotch curve. And I'm just going to try and attempt to do this. Now, 
I, this is where it gets kind of um, your own personal preference, kind of a design preference, if you will. I actually like to come up above that stitching line a little bit. Just think that that kind of holds it just a little bit better. Um, and then you can do a bar, uh, bar tack kind of on like right here and right here if you wanted to. It's kind of up to you. All right. Which would be the same as what we did. So that, as you can see, we've tacked this in place here. And then there's stitching that goes up here. And I am going to bar tack that um, off camera just because I'm having a hard time <laughs> getting close enough up to that. But um, okay, our last step here is to take your seam ripper and you're just going to cut open those basting stitches we did right at the beginning, maybe. Oh, for heaven's sake. Okay, there we go. So we're just going to open up those basting stitches. And you'll want to pull out all those little extra threads. But there you have it. We have a fly zipper. And again, this works just the same for skirts as it does for pants. It's just you're working with a crotch curve there as opposed to um, a center front seam. So there you have it, guys. That is a fly zipper. As always, leave me any questions you have down below. And I will see you all next week for we should be um, doing the first of the two exposed zippers uh, next week. All right. Have a good one. Bye-bye.